Today, I'll be ranking all the X-Men movies from worst to best. Stick around. DJ Lynx is in the building. What's going on everybody? It's your boy DJ Lynx. Back in the building, DJ back in effect, Lynx. and back with another video. And today I'll be ranking all the X-Men movies from worst to best. And when I say X-Men movies, I mean all the X-Men movies and the Wolverine movies. I'm specifically going to leave out Deadpool 1 and 2 because I think that's its own thing. And I'm going to be honest, I've never seen the new mutant, so that's being left off. So this is going to be the 10 X-Men slash Wolverine movies. Let's go. Number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have X-Men Dark Phoenix, and I'm just gonna say it. That shit is trash. It's easily the worst of the X-Men movies. It's boring, the villains are easily forgettable, and it loses what made us care for the core characters in the first place. There are so many better ways that they could have introduced the Phoenix Force, and every step of the movie, this shit just falls flat. This is probably the only movie on this list that I will call complete trash. Number nine. Oh man, at number 9 we have X-Men Apocalypse, and while this movie isn't complete trash, it definitely comes close. On the positive side, the Weapon X cameo is absolutely genius, that pretty much stole the show. But on the negative side, and it's a glaring negative, what the f*** did they do with Apocalypse? They completely destroyed the character of Apocalypse, he should have been presented as a Thanos type character, big, bulky, intimidating, and they completely went the opposite casting of 5 foot Oscar Isaac as this character, bad decision making all around. It's easily one of the worst comic to screen adaptations of a comic book villain ever. If you want to check out how Apocalypse should really be portrayed, check out the old school X-Men cartoon. I think it's season four and I think they're called Beyond Good and Evil. It's like a four episode arc and it's perfect. Number eight. At number 8 we have X-Men The Last Stand and this falls victim to just having too many damn characters. Most of the new character introductions are lame except for Beast, like whoever <laughs> hired or cast Kelsey Grammer as Beast, that was perfection, shout out to you. But all the other new characters are pretty damn lame. This flick isn't bad per se, but it's definitely not good. I'm glad they were able to do the Juggernaut justice in Deadpool 2 cause Vinnie Jones just wasn't it. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! Number 7. At number 7 we have X-Men Origins Wolverine and oh man there are so many things wrong with this movie that it's not even funny. First and foremost they did Deadpool super dirty and most of the new character introductions were trash or just lame jokey one note characters. With the exception of Liev Schreiber. Liev Schreiber murdered his role and he was the first like real bad guy that they introduced into the X-Men universe. A dude that just wanted to kill for the sake of killing. Because of him and Hugh Jackman's committal to the character, the movie somehow manages to stay entertaining with all its flaws. Number six. At number six, we have The Wolverine. The Wolverine takes Logan to Japan and essentially breathes new life into the franchise, which this is like the sixth film in the franchise overall. That was a super smart decision to kind of change the scenery. The first act is really well done establishing these characters. The second act picks up the pace with a badass fight on top of a bullet train in Japan. The third act, well, it does fall apart with the whole CGI silver samurai thing, but it's still entertaining as hell. Number five. At number 5 we have X-Men the OG, the one that started it all. Without X-Men and Blade before that, I don't think we would have had the comic book boom that we've had over the last 20 years. Besides the importance of this film to the whole comic book movie industry overall, it's still a good movie and it holds up pretty well. Watching it with fresh eyes recently, I have a deeper appreciation of the way they treated the source material and the characters. My main gripe with this X-Men movie and then the two sequels after that is that Ian McKellen never posed like a real threat as Magneto. He always seemed like too cool for school. Other than that, this is a classic milestone film and that's why it lands at the spot that it lands on. Number four. At number four we have X2, X-Men United and X2 does everything that a sequel should do. It takes everything that worked well in the first movie and it just expands upon it and makes it better. I love how they expand on Wolverine's background and introduces us to William Stryker and the Weapon X program. The 
opening is amazing, showing Nightcrawler almost assassinating the president. I love how the X-Men have to team up with Magneto and kind of band together to take on this other threat in William Stryker, who poses an overall threat to all mutants. It even ends on a somber note with Jean Grey sacrificing herself to let the team escape in the X-Jet, even teasing us with like a Phoenix thing. Right before the credits roll, you see like the Phoenix silhouette over the ocean. This is a fantastic, fantastic film and it lands at number four. Number three. At number three, we have X-Men First Class. And even though X-Men First Class is at number three, the top three films on this list are basically interchangeable depending on the mood that I'm in. All three of these next films are top tier, but X-Men First Class is the one that surprised me the most. I had zero expectations going into this prequel and boy, was I pleasantly surprised. It being a period piece and chock full of cheese actually worked in the film's favor. They used a whole 60s background to their advantage. James McAvoy was a great young Professor X and Kevin Bacon killed it as Sebastian Shaw. But the real star, easily my favorite casting out of the entire X-Men universe is Michael Fassbender. Fassbender? 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 Michael Fassbender as the young Magneto. He absolutely murders it, bringing a sympathetic quality to the character that we don't see out of all the other characters in this universe. Easily my favorite scene in this film and possibly my favorite scene from any X-Men film is when young Magneto at the end like sends the Nazi coin right through Sebastian Shaw's forehead killing him in slow-mo ah that is so dope and as he's doing it you just see the pain in his eyes like oh man I've been waiting for this moment my entire life super amazing acting by Michael Fassbender and that's why X-Men First Class lands at number three on this list number two Number two on this list, Logan. Logan is a cinematic achievement in its own right. It's probably the Marvel or Fox equivalent as far as tone and handling the subject matter to let's say The Dark Knight. As far as acting, in my opinion, is Hugh Jackman's best performance outside of his role in Prisoner. Dude brings it. Patrick Stewart also delivers an Oscar worthy performance as an ailing Professor X dealing with like dementia. His acting is just like A1 right there. My only real gripe about Logan is Boyd Holbrook. He did absolutely nothing for me. Other than that, this film is perfection. Number one. At number one on this list, we have X-Men Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past for me is the pinnacle out of all the X-Men movies. For me, it's the 90s cartoon come to life. All of the characters are handled brilliantly. The time travel aspect to the film is done phenomenally. Everything just strikes the right tone. The meeting of Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy on screen at the same time felt like a big deal. And watching it recently, I was just like, oh shit, like this is super, super dope. And you got to remember, this was done before all the multiverse stuff that Marvel and Disney are doing now. So this was crazy when it dropped. Of course, the one that steals the show is Evan Peters' Quicksilver. Oh man, that slow-mo scene is epic as they break Magneto out of his prison. Very, very well done. My only real gripe with this film, I feel that Peter Dinklage was miscast as Bolivar Trask. And I'll tell you why. I feel that his character facing his own challenges as a little person would have some semblance of sympathy for the mutants because they both represent oppressed groups. So that was a miss for me. Other than that, I feel that X-Men Days of Future Past is one of the top 10 comic book movies of all time. So that's my list. All the X-Men movies rank worst to best let me know what you think about this list down in the comments below let me know if you want to see more content like this i'm kind of you know diversifying the portfolio a little bit and your feedback will go a long way and that's going to do it for me ladies and gentlemen as always subscribe like hit that notification bell share this video tell your friends about me consider joining the link squad and as always most importantly spread love because it's the brooklyn way peace